Messier's catalogue of things which aren't comets have an awful lot of open clusters in them, uh, and this is yet another in the series of open clusters. Collection of stars in the Canis Major is the constellation it's in. Uh, it's a couple of thousand light years away, 200 million years old, so it really is kind of a middle-aged, middle-distance, average open cluster. So it turns out there is one potentially interesting thing about this uh, open cluster, which is potentially it might have been observed by Aristotle in about 350 BC, which would make it the faintest object observed in antiquity. So here's a picture of it. That's not how Aristotle saw this, it. This is not how Aristotle saw it. So it's, it's quite, I mean, it's quite uh, bright in total, right? There's a whole load of stars here. If you add up the brightness from all of them, it's about four and a half magnitude. So it's, in terms of total brightness, it's something that the eye could perfectly well see. The problem is that it's actually spread out over about the size of the full moon. So the amount of brightness in any little bit of the sky is actually very small. And so it's actually, in terms of its surface brightness, in terms of what your eye would actually see, it really is right at the limit of what you could see with the naked eye. So Aristotle wrote a book called Meteorology, about 350 BC. And in it, he talks about a whole load of different things. There's actually even some dispute as to whether he wrote it himself, but this is actually the early part of the, of the book, which most scholars seem to think that he really did write himself. So this really is potentially Aristotle's writing himself. This section of the book is about the nature of comets. Um, so interestingly, it ties in with what Messier was getting confused between comets and other things. And he was interested in what theories were of comets. Uh, in antiquity, there were various theories sort of knocking around that they might be some kind of strange reflection effect that causes the tail, that you might just be seeing a conjunction of a couple of planets. And so he was basically trying to distinguish between these theories or shoot them down. And what he pointed out was that there are various things out there that look like comets that don't move. And all these various other theories all implied that the object should move. Um, and so this is really very much the same kind of thing that Messier was worried about, that actually there are some things out there that look rather like comets, but that don't actually move. Of course, Aristotle didn't have that level of distinction. So he was saying, well, what are, these things clearly are comets too, and we need some explanation as to why some of them move and some of them don't move. And the thing that he pointed to that didn't move was, let me read the, the bit of the text here, for a, a star in the thigh of the dog, so that's Canis Major, constellation we're looking at, had a tail, though a faint one. And the suggestion is actually, it was, I think the suggestion was first made in the 19th century that what he'd actually identified here was M41. And so here's, here's the finding chart that tells you how to find Messier 41. And here's the constellation Canis Major, there's M41. Whether you describe that as being in the thigh of the dog depends on quite how you join the dots and which bit you think's a leg and hence which bit you think's a thigh, but at least plausibly, it is a faint fuzzy object in, the, in Canis Major, in, the, in the, the dog. The interesting thing is it really is right at the limits of what you could hope to see with the naked eye. But in fact, Aristotle talks about that because what he says here, the next sentence here, he says, if you fixed your sight on it, its light was dim. But if you just glanced at it, it appeared bright. This is a very famous technique that's often used by astronomers called averted vision, which is that actually if you stare intently at something, you can't see it anymore. Whereas actually if you look off to the side a little bit, you can often see the object kind of in your peripheral vision much better than you can if you're looking at it directly. And I think this is the first recorded uh, case of where this, this technique was actually applied to, to see something very faint in the sky. Yeah, we should talk about averted vision. So the reason why averted vision, so the, we need to talk a little bit about the physiology of the eye. There's two kinds of sensors in the eye. There are these things called rods and cones. The rods are sensitive to low levels of light, but only give you a black and white view of the universe. The cones are the things that give you the color vision. If you look at where the different types of sensors are in the eye, it turns out the cones are very much concentrated towards the center of the eye. So the central part of your field of vision is very good at seeing things in color, but not very good at seeing faint things because it doesn't have these rods in there, which are the things that pick up the faint levels of light. Whereas the more peripheral parts of your vision, there are many more of the rods there. So actually things in your peripheral vision, you can see faint, but you can't really see in color. Um, so actually by not staring directly at something, but by looking off to the side a little bit, you're using that bit of your your retina, which has lots and lots of these rods in, so you're very good at seeing the fainter things. Where would Aristotle have been looking from? Where Was he around Greece or something? I believe so, and it's actually, it's a fairly southern object, so actually it's good that he was a reasonable way south in order to see it himself. Um, again, there's some doubt as to whether he's reporting his own observations or somebody else's observations, but at least potentially he was actually seeing it himself. In some ways it's particularly fascinating that 
astronomy is so much driven by technology nowadays, it's kind of amazing when you look back to say, what could you do before there was any technology? Some of the things that, that the ancient astronomers were doing were truly stunning. Chinese whispers sort of thing happening here. Right, and it's not a small book, right? It's actually got masses of technical detail in it. So the idea of actually transcribing some of this stuff, you know, you've got tables, so here's a whole table of positions and magnitudes of stars. 